Hello everyone, thank you again for inviting me to speak something more clinical this time than I usually speak about regulation and also this time is more related to what I really do by day by day and it's my daily practice in my department. So we can talk something more clinical for this time. No disclosures. So here, again in practice, so we have the challenge of respiratory artifacts in radiotherapy. Uh, what we will talk about passivity for radiotherapy planning. The management of respiratory discussion, uh, passivity with respiratory gating, and uh, which will be the role of nuclear medicine technologies in this business. So what we, uh, we can talk about radiation therapy. So technological evaluation in radiation therapy allows really great personalization of treatment and those confirmation to the target organ. They are, uh, the guys for the therapy are really trying to tailor the therapy for every patient. So we, uh, we need great precision in radiating the target organ with the requested dose. And what we will also want is ill tissue dose reduction. So a multidisciplinary approach is needed and molecular imaging may play a major role in this business. One challenge, respiratory movements in radiation therapy. When we have thoracic and abdominal lesions, such as tumors in the lungs, liver or, or the liver, are influenced by respiratory movements. The range of movement effects may vary even within the same organ, so we can have a lesion in the apex, it will be a different movement than a lesion in the base of the lungs. And respiratory discussion may produce movement artifacts ranging from few millimeters to even two, three centimeters during normal respirations. The spear or moment of the lesion may vary according to the respiratory frequencies and the relationship with the patient's general condition. So we have, a, if we have a patient with bad general condition, may have a more movement because he is breathing more deeper. And also change in a, this is really a challenge for radiotherapy delivery. Tumors may be brought completely outside the treated volume. Those guidance may be inaccurate. Tumor will receive lower dose than expected with major side dose on healthy tissue. And this effect often suggests radiotherapy to enlarge the margin of treated volume. And so we have a re the radiation of a larger volume of healthy tissues. What does it mean? It means that we are uh, putting really, really huge field to be sure to take uh, to uh, irradiate the tumors. But we also give a lot of dose to the healthy tissues around the tumors that we are going to treat. So here some little bit talk about the RT planning process. We have a cross tumor volume that is an also biological target volume. We'll talk also about the clinical target volume that's considered also micro disease around the tumor. We have the internal target volume is about how the tumor move. And also we have the set of margin that must consider also some a little bit uh, parts of what is the machine adapting to that. As you can see, we are radiating really, really a larger wall than what is in a real lesion. So how it happens, uh, PET-CT? PET-CT will really improve treatment planning, helping in defining the metabolic active tone volume and minimizing the risk of geographical miss. So PET helps defining the biological target volume that integrated with the clinical tone volume can direct the tumor tissues to be treated. PET information may enable a significant reduction of radiation target fields, sparing the healthy tissue, and reducing the side effects of the treatment. What does it mean? We know where the two part, active tumor part is, and we really try to treat only the active part that is responsible to the radiation therapy. So, uh, image acquisition for early planning and treatment needs. The consistency of tabletops and the use of laser lights for patient setups. We have to be in the same situation as there can be the treatment. A definition of patient initial position, so we know how the patient will be doing the radiotherapy, we do PCT with the same position. And we have to use the same immobilization device of the radiotherapy department. So they bring our immobilization design, we use them in our PET, uh, with our, our PET scanner. But patient physical limitation and psychological facts need to be taken into account. A PET scanner is lasting from 20 to 30 minutes, it's a long while, and also we have to take into account that it can be really stressful for the patients. A physical condition may really change our the people, they are really, sometimes are really suffering from PET for therapy plan. We have to take into account these kind of problems. We need to set the, to record uh, setup data, so uh, typically say, okay, we plan it this way, 
you know that and they have to record really accurately. And in the other situation is having radiation therapies involved in, a, in the patient in imaging capacity. We really need a close liaison between the two departments and clear the tailored protocols for the type of patients that are for localization and for localization of tumor size. So we need really to know what's happening in the radiation therapy department and to know to have a good practice imaging. Let's back to what's problem in uh, motion management techniques. So, best study, the formative in free body condition are affected by motion artifacts, as was shown in the talk uh, uh, yesterday. And so the immetric radiation effect. But when we have activity of constant source, appears to mirror over the volume of this patient, because a loss of the lesion detectability, there is an underestimation of SUV, overestimation of the volume, and uh, in integrated capacity tongues, imagine a special mesalinia in that registration. So sometimes we have the CT showing the region in place and the patient showing the head in another place. It happens when they have really, really large exclusion. Here an example. Yes. You can see how much is the spatial difference between uh, the region. So we have well, a lesion that probably is less than 6.9 uh, millimeters, it happens to be, well, 5 millimeters. It's really, really a large description on that. You can see how it changes the uh, lesions. What we, we can do? There are some excursions of war, some type of uh, management. This is the break of the CT. So where the procedure is uh, was used mainly for CT, and uh, we used it to have break hold. Well, in the RT planning is, is uh, helpful only if uh, the treatment is short enough to allow operators, otherwise it's add new force. And it's really great help from the patients. So, uh, intensity is a limited only a single field of view cannot be taken for the exam. And also, we need a, a lot of respiratory coaching to ensure that the patient will hold their breath. Images are most free of motion artifacts and minimize the distress of this mesh. And the SUV lesion, uh, SUV and the detectable lesion is more accurate. Uh, it's useful, well, only if there is a brittle condition for the LTV. And it depends even on patient cooperation and physical ability to comply with hold. Well, brittle opacity, uh, as you can see, there is a, a case that we is made or was made in Timmy's Sweden. As you can see, the, the difference between having a brittle CT and the misregistration is now it's really, really huge. Now we yeah, have quite, quite a better action. Okay, we are not against brittle, but it's only for some particular cases. Actually, we don't want to use it in the department. I wanted to show you anyway because it can be used in some situation. Well, respiratory gating for the CT. It, uh, the, well, the aim is producing a motion free and well mastered pattern CT image corresponding to a specific phase of the patient respiratory cycle. The clinical input could be in a detection and accurate metabolic reduction of lesion affected by respiratory moment. And for additional therapy, it is useful to assess the true volume of the tumor and its real motion obtain an accurate target delineation, a personalized definition of the treatment plan. So this can be used for, for both for diagnostic procedure and both for additional therapy uh, planning. What we need, a tomograph with a large probe enough. Well, uh, have a, a flat table, a radio therapy setup, an emergency system as used in the uh, department, the density getting out of a patient respiratory monitoring system, and also a DICOM uh, archive protocol. We have, we'll talk about a couple of uh, two, three, there are many systems that were used for respiratory gating. One was the spirometry system. It measured the respiratory flow of iron coming and out coming from the lungs. Temperature sensor, it measured the temperature of the air incoming and out coming from the nose during breathing. Well, we used it. We didn't use that, but uh, just to show you. This one we used, it was a pressure sensor, and it's an elastic belt containing a load cell that can be fastened on patient abdomen. With the movement, the belt tightened, producing a change of the pressure inside the belt, which is measured with the load cells. So we have this with load cells, the measure out the screws. 
We start at that, uh, which is a scan in this mode, and, mm, but we use it on a previously selected patient. Uh, we use them only in patients with uh, basal lung cancer. And the patient selected was suspected uh, for that. And after the whole body PET, we didn't the only respiratory gate, we did a whole body PET CT, and then we do it on the, just on the one bed, on the lungs, on the part of the room where we assume that we should have a lesion. So what we did, well, there was a, uh, the patient was instructed to keep the, the breathing regular, and then we tightened the load cell on the patient. Then we start recording the, uh, the movement of the patients and trigger it with a retrospective model with six phases of respiratory. So the respiratory phase are divided in six. And one, when acquisition that are addressed to a selected respiratory phase, that will all get uh, the good getting possible sensing. So only one phase will be really uh, analyzed. Here we have a good case report because uh, we, did, we had it with, um, when there was a suspicion of a basal lung cancer, we did a, a PET CT scan and the nodule was negative, where there was not uh, enough activity. However, they decided to perform a PET CT with uh, respiratory gating and uh, there was a clear positivity uh, to the FDG of the suspected node. And there it was really good because we diagnosed a problem in a patient that would never, never receive a, a good diagnosis. Well, well, we have an experience that is comparable to literature data, and uh, the, then the protocol performed PCT with spectrogetic to all patients with suspected death. But we really had big problems in finding eligible patients because, well, sometimes they come for a diagnosis, sometimes they come not of an accurate uh, staging, so it was difficult to find patients for that. It's really time consuming, uh, more than 20 minutes just for the bed. And at the time, we had only one PET scan, uh, scanner available. So I mean, the full schedule made difficult to insert this method in the daily party because you have to plan it in the day before. It was really difficult to find the eligible patients the day before. And the department also was, uh, at the moment, they decided to switch from another type of respiratory gated method. So this time there was not any more compatibility. We had to use it only for the angles. So, well, it was a try, but uh, actually we didn't proceed with that. But we didn't uh, give up with the uh, respiratory gate. We said, we want to do it again. So we changed it also. And we changed it with uh, having a new tomograph. We tried to adapt having the, um, a, new system, a new system, that the optical electronic system. And it, 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 used, it was the same that our radiation therapy department used. So we have a camera, an optical camera. We know a simple box. And uh, well, the camera should look at the movement of the box. And from this, it can trigger the acquisition of the pet, of the pet and of the CD. Here I show how it works. You see the camera, the, the box of the patient, and that. And also you see how it was like before, the respiration. This is, uh, was taken from Copenhagen, but it's the same, we use the same positioning. So I use the workflow, preparation and color setup, immobilizing system, I think the radiation therapy department. Patient training, injection, whole body CT for attenuation correction and co registration, PET standard, standard patient monitor. We, now we start to monitor the patient, the, the brief of the patient. Now we do SCT 4D, it's about, uh, you can see the, uh, the protocol that we use, it lasts one minute. And then we do a this mode for 9 to 12 minutes acquisition with a single FOB. You can see how it works. This time we use all eight cycles. We divide the cycle of respiratory cycle in eight parts and we use all eight parts. And you can see really this SUV max really change from one phase to another. And it's really interesting because you can see how this, uh, you really see when you do respiratory getting how movement affects the detectors in uh, opacity. And you can see how it changed. So the same was really, really, really improved with that. Here another, you can see the difference between every, uh, having a standard opacity and a respiratory getting opacity in co registration. 
So where we work with, uh, uh, we're back to our uh, images of the RNT planning post, where we work with uh, respect to gated here in defining these margins, they really can change. So which is the role of technologists in all of this? Well, patient preparation, uh, you need really, really to talk with the patient and be able to have him cooperate with you. A patient training is needed. And a patient must be instructed about the study profile because sometimes they get upset. Why I have to do a long while, stay there for a long? Uh, you have to explain why are you uh, doing that. And uh, really, training plays an important role in this. Uh, not only in uh, gating, but also in every time you do uh, opacity for radiotherapy planning. Well, the scanning time is longer. How the video cushion textures can be used? Sometimes they use it. We don't use that, but in some center they use that. As a, well, you have to talk with the patient sometimes during the examination. And also, this, uh, we have to use the same approach both for the PET-CT imaging and uh, for the radiation therapy uh, treatment session. So, as conclusion, well, yeah, we are really, respect targeting seems to be a valuable tool in improving diagnostic performance of PET-CT and better define the target volume for radiation therapy. Actually, we do not know if there is really, really an improvement in patient survival. That's really not, it's not still not known. And so we really feel that, well, uh, with the uh, continual stress to tailoring their treatments on patients, we really will feel that the routine clinical use of respiratory gating for the PCT will be appealing for the years to come. Well, um, I, we hope that in the future will be a routine because it can really, really provide a specific inter, uh, internal volume definition, reducing overall uh, planning target volume. But what, what we really want is to not treat with radiation therapy uh, heat issues. That's what we really want. And to really lower psychiatric for radiation therapy. And also, also to, re, uh, to be more effective and aggressive on really what we need to be treated by radiation therapy. Thank you for all. Thank you. Any question for Mr. Travel I have one question. What is the material of the box that you use in the second? Uh, yes, plastic. Slide? Plastic. Plastic. Yeah. That's and a... how are you going to fix it on the skin? Uh, this is a. This is a tricky issue because we got the point. There were one of the problems that we usually face because we have that we fix it with some uh, adhesive and that. But the problem is that when you have uh, contact with the mask from the radiation therapy, because the mask tends to uh, don't absorb a lot of exclusion, so it tends to be difficult to to, find, to trigger because we have a really, really low exclusion and sometimes we lose some data for that. So it's really tricky. We to, sometimes we, have, we choose to have it really, really low because we found that, that uh, well, the abdomen moves quite the same. And triggering with the abdomen is better than triggering with, uh, within the lungs. That's what we do when we should have treatment. And it's quite a, a tricky because, well, it, usually the, it, just that is, even, uh, is, uh, is enough. But with that, the planning can be really challenging to fix the, the box. Thank you for your talk. Uh, uh, may I ask you how many uh, CT slides you're using for uh, your clinic in your lab? For this, uh, you say for uh, the uh, yes. I will use, I think, about 1.25 slides uh, millimeters. So it depends on the hope. Just uh, it depends on the hope of the machine. It's uh, 1.35 thick slides. Uh, okay. Uh, are you? Uh, uh, are you saying that if I have a, a facility for doing respiratory gating and I'm not doing a radiotherapy planning, I shouldn't be bothered doing... Uh, uh, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that what, what is our main application is for uh, radiation therapy planning. Because we do radiation therapy planning on daily basis. The debate is, is, I know that it's not so common uh, to have it, but it's a, for, for me it's quite daily practice because we are really asking for a lot of, we do about two, three patients a day, 
and we could monetize this about the other. So it was incumbent very natural to use it to fall down, because we feel that it's the much more impact. But also for the angles in some other centers like you know, Mina, like Sarafel Hospital, they use it and there have a lot of uh, questions, you know, maybe I can give you some uh, details on the charge. There are a lot of uh, evidence of uh, using it for uh, diagnosis. Our experience with dialysis was not so uh, exciting uh, with that, but other centers have better experience than us. So if you want, I can give you the taste of some other people are using it for, uh, also for diagnosis. I have one other question. I'm just curious, uh, and I'll just roll in. Do you also need the external lasers? And if you do, does the technologists do that, or a combination of the radiotherapist and technologist? Does the radiotherapist come with the PET scanner and then position the patient? I'm just kind of curious of your general practice uh, doing radiation therapy plan. Uh, well, actually, we have to think also talking about competencies to get uh, I am also a research therapist. <laughs> so, uh, formally, even if I'm not able to, I'm not even uh, turn on the uh, machine, <laughs> but is the formally, I'm able to also do therapy plan, uh, planning without the CT, also with the CT, also. I uh, do it with that. We started with our cooperation with them. So, they came to our department, they show up, and they had uh, material as to plan. Uh, the, after a while, they were so scared by the mission so that uh, they didn't come anymore. And <laughs> they just left us uh, to do it. This is really a lot of problems to us. Because sometimes we do not know what's really happening uh, in their department. And this sometimes gives us to uh, um, some problems to call them, discount, a lot of problems like that. And you, you, uh, the focus group. Our suggestion and, uh, is to really have a cooperation. Because we know that in our country there are different types. And you really have to cooperate. Because co with cooperation with the mission technology, you really know what's better for the patient. And so in the aspect of putting the patient, you know, the focus on the patient, we really suggest you to, or at least to have a good schedule to, to really know what's happening with the first planning. Because we do not do it as a, the only planning. Is uh, maybe just as, as a secondary planning. In some departments, they used to do everything on the city. In the some department, like in Copenhagen, they are doing like uh, every Okay, we plan the patients, they are do city, and we, we do pet city, we do all together, and the patient is now fine, should go to treatment. That's not happening in our department, so I recommend cooperation if you are wanting to be involved in this kind of thing. Uh, a couple of questions, please. Uh, uh, for the work that you have done so far, it's like a, uh, it's a clinical and research issue, right? Or it's only clinical uh, work? That's clinical. We practice it. Uh, oh, you are practicing it? Yes, we do practice. The research issue. No, no, so, no, no, no. so the choice of uh, choosing the patients was randomly. I mean, it depends when. Uh, well, you have to start with something. Yeah. We yeah. have to start with something, and we started wanted to start to have some results. Yeah, the point that we, because I want to ask you is that it, you have, uh, of course, you have seen like a, a cooperative patients and elderly or you know disease patients. So for the one who are uh, cooperative, when you are instructing them to spread hope, they would do that. But for the for the, I mean, you have disease patients. I mean, the very disease patients. Who cannot, you know, follow your instructions? So you are following the getting uh, um, a respiratory uh, process for them, right? Yeah, uh, that's right. The respiratory getting uh, is not made up for uh, uh, not to use polycode. No? Yeah. And now the problem we felt that polycode that's it, they, course, yeah, is the not it is not a good uh, moment because it brings a lot of difficulty with many patients. So we really feel that the uh, respiratory getting is better, not only for uh, male disease patients, but also for every patient. Oh, so you apply it for all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, also, good, good, good medical. It was that we have to start with something. So you, you have a problem, uh, emotional artifacts. That was it. We thought that works so well, there are other problems. We, do, we have we are not said, yes, but we have problem with compatibility. It's not just replicating with the moment. Okay, fine. We did it and uh, then we keep it for that because we felt that there was the better solution. Fine. Right. And this, uh, sorry, but uh, another question regarding the uh, 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 images that you showed us for the CT and the head images. Uh, you have compared the, between the corrected 
Yes, because we have a uh, uh, capacity discount before. Uh -huh. So we call, always perform a capacity discount without the speculating. So we can compare how the output speculating affects the diesel, affects the part of which the diesel is found. And also, since we do on just one bed, we need a capacity before to be sure that we are doing that because it happens a lot of times that we are saying, okay, we did the lesion there. And we find an isolation from other processes. So we really need, like, really strongly suggest not to do just as we are thinking, but just to show. Like, uh, they say, they do whole body, you just do that, not to do maybe total body, so not to from the head uh, to the feet, but just to the whole body scan before it's really always needed. I'd like to share our experience um, with Wake Cancer Control Center. We do have the laser bridge, and the radiotherapists come up. And they do the planning. So we do the whole body imaging um, on a flat table, and then they come in and they do the markers, and then we do the region that they want. If it was a lung cancer or a colorectal cancer, so we do have in our department. So it's a combination of the nutrition technologist and the radiotherapist. We're working together. Yes, actually, you know, more advanced than us because we we need like a second, uh, like a confirmation of the. Uh, yeah. And what's really, really often happens that with that CT, we really find that um, sometimes the target is really misaligned. So they want to take something and maybe there is something else to be taken that is more important. It just happens. Because a lot of patients did, did not have the PET CT scan before. So we use both of, as a confirmation of the therapy and also as a confirmation of that. This is a problem with the laser therapy department. That uh, not only could fit, not only in PCT, but also in uh, magnetic resonance and also in this, the national city. They have a lot of. Um, in the, it's still, in my opinion, this we are we can really, really improve in uh, coordination in that. But it's, uh, it's, it was not a talk for that. We are we, we reached it after a while. There is a history in which we tried to do. The probably next step will be to work together. <laughs> The, the, the idea solution is to, to start with the idea to apply. So you can do it in a wheelchair machine. In some new departments, they are doing that. So we, we plan to do it all together. When you have two the separate departments that try to work together, you have always a problem with the uh, coexistence of systems. And that's uh, the main issue. So it's, it's more difficult. It's not uh, it's achievable. But now we use it more as a confirmation of the plans. They use it as just a direct plan, like it, for example in Copenhagen. The fact is that uh, when you have to do it, uh, you have also to do diagnostic CT with intravenous contours. So it really, really takes a lot of while. So it takes, can take some one hour to do that. And so you have to think about it. Yes, if you have a big CT with diagnostic CT uh, on site, we're going to take dedicated. Then you're going to have uh, to do the CT as well as pay for the management of the patient. Yeah. Well, you can really have uh, a full schedule for the patient. In one session, you can really have a good, the confidence diagnosis and planning for the therapy. You can do it. It's possible. With the, with some method, we can do also in our department, but we actually do not to do it. Well, uh, <laughs> we don't really know with that. Uh, actually, is the, in the software is uh, is expected. So we have also software that helps us to regularize when you have really, really some data missing. Yeah, there is a possible to well, to work after to when you do the construction of the reaction to minimize the effect with the software. So the problem is not the, is the, usually we start when we find regular uh, So the problem is when the patient stops quickly regularly doing the action. But we have a software that allows us to fill in the gaps with that. So to keep on and then have a, you know like a simulation. You have all the breathing, you have five minutes with the current breathing, and the other you simulated the breathing was going on. And so you have uh, still a good exams. Mm -hmm. And also the breathing uh, does uh, the software some averaging. If you have like uh, 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 something is, is going misty in one uh, breath, it uh, does the averaging where you have a nice regular uh, uh, gating here. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. It's really important to have a long, uh, about ten minutes is expected to be sure to have enough hands that count. So if you have so you can still So you can still, even if the, the patient you have to stop early, you have enough statistics to work on and uh, do a uh, couple of exams. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank you all for the question. It was really incredibly nice in this two days. This is my last presentation. I really want to thank you again, the organizer. It was really, really a great uh, session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.